The first time I really questioned it, I was working on a project where we were measuring HIV in people's blood at this place called uh, Specialty Laboratories in Santa Monica. I was just an, a, a consultant there. I came in about three days a month and we were working on that and at some point we needed to re-up our, our grant from the NIH to work on that and I had to write it. And so the first line of that was HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. And I wrote that and then I said, well, I need a paper, some kind of scientific paper, to reference that statement. Because when you make a, a statement like that, that's like a fact. You need to say, here's how come I know that. Right? You put a little one if it's the first statement you've made, and then you put down at the bottom of the paper, you have a one, and you say, here's a paper by somebody that describes why that statement is true. Right? And so I said, to, I said well, well, what's that? I don't know. Let me think about it. What is that paper? Who do I go to for that? And I looked around, I asked a couple of virologists at that company, and they said, no, you don't have to reference that. I said, I have to reference that, because I, I don't know where that came from. How do I know that? And it turned out that nobody knew it. There wasn't a scientific reference, like a, a paper that somebody had submitted with like experimental data in it, and like logical discussion, and said, here's how come we know that HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. There was nothing out there like that. Nothing. Can you tell about your experience when you met Luke Montagnier for the first time and you questioned him about his ability well, to get a reference for HIV since he is the one who... By the time I met Luke Montagnier, I had met a lot of AIDS researchers at meetings and I had always gone up to them. If they, if they talked like they knew about H, HIV and AIDS, I always went up to them afterwards and I said, where can I find a scientific reference that I can use from my, remember I said I had a sentence there, it said HIV is the probable cause of AIDS and I needed to have that backed up by something before I could write it and submit it. And I went around and I asked a whole lot of people, I said, well, the people, you know, I can't find it. I, first I looked for it, you know, just in, in like computer searching kind of stuff like that, but then I said, there's got to be somebody that knows this. So you go to the experts and ask them. And so I asked all these people one after the other and none of them had it. None of them. And I was getting really freaked about that. That's when I first started saying, they don't know. Nobody really knows. This whole thing is a big sham. It's ridiculous. But then finally Montagnier came to a, there was a, a special little seminar down in San Diego where an old friend of Robert Gallo's, Flossie Wongstall, was opening up a Department of AIDS Research down in San Diego. They had big, lots of money involved, federal money. And they had Montagnier come there and give a talk. And after that, they had a little wine and cheese thing. And I went over to Montagnier afterwards and I said, uh, Dr. Montagnier, I, 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 have a, I can't find a uh, reference. Like who, I can't find a reference to go with the statement, HIV is the probable cause of AIDS. I, I'm sure you can help me. And he, he knew that he probably should be able to help me. And he said, well, why don't you quote this new work? This, and by new, he meant like something that came out this year. Right? This new work about a, 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 a virus that can kill uh, monkeys. Or I think it was not monkeys. It was like uh, something related to monkeys, some kind of a baby, a little ape. And, and I had read that, and I said, that didn't. It was like supposedly going to be a model system for studying AIDS. If somebody had figured out some kind of retrovirus that passing it back and forth between various mammals, they could, prob they could finally put it into chimpanzees and kill them. And it killed them in about a week. And it didn't kill them in any, there was nothing like AIDS there. You know, it, it doesn't kill you in a week. It was just it's totally ridiculous. It, none of the symptoms were the same. And I said, I said, well, you know, I read that paper and I didn't, I didn't see any connection between that and AIDS. And I, and I, and I, and I don't think that would be a real, I, I wouldn't want to use that as a reference. And uh, I don't remember exactly what he said, but I know he walked away. Oh, no, before he told me about that paper, he said, why don't you use the NIH, like the, the CDC report? And I said, well, I looked at that, and that was not a scientific paper. And then he said, what about this other thing, this, this 
this like paper that had just come out about a month before and, and it a lot of fanfare associated with that paper but it was total crap it was like yeah if you get two million dollars you can figure out how to kill a primate with a retrovirus so what doesn't have anything to do with AIDS it didn't look like AIDS it didn't smell like AIDS it wasn't AIDS it was just like got a retrovirus that can kill a chimpanzee so what so I I didn't get any more out of him. He walked away after that. And the people standing around, by the way, who were his colleagues there, looked at him like they were thinking he should come up with a better answer than that. But he couldn't, and that's, he just turned around and walked away. I really thought he'd have an answer. I really did. I mean, that was my last... I was right at the edge of my, my faith in the system. But I thought, Montagnier will know why he thinks HIV causes it, and he'll tell me. He'll say, because of this study, you know, but he didn't have that. None of those guys have that, and that's why they're so, they're so weird, you know. That's why they don't want dissent. They don't want people like me walking up and asking them those kind of questions, and they're willing to, like, go to great lengths to prevent that. They're out on a limb. I wouldn't want to be there with them. I want to ask this to Carrie. How do they um, misuse PCR to estimate uh, all these so supposed free viral RNAs that may or may not be there? Uh, is this, um, I think misuse PCR is not quite, I don't think you can misuse PCR. No, the results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say, if, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body, okay? So that could be thought of as a misuse of it just to, to claim that it's meaningful. But the, the real misuse of it is, is that it, you don't need to test for HIV. You don't need to test for the other 10,000 retroviruses that are unnamed also in the subject. See, somebody that's got HIV generally is going to have almost anything that you can test for because they have definitely been, HIV is a fairly rare virus. There's only one million of us out of 250, 300 million people in America that have that virus. So you have to get around, either your mother had to have it and pass it to you, or you have to really be paying a lot of attention to people that do have it and paying only attention to them and get a pretty good chance of getting it that way. It's hard to get it, but it, if you have it, there's a good chance you've also got a lot of other ones because you've been in the, in the market for them. It's been possible for you to get a lot of... It's, it's, it's a, to test for that one and say that has any special meaning is what I think is the problem. Not that PCR has been misused. It's like... It's not an estimation. No, it's a real. It's a really quantitative thing. It How tells you it, something about nature and about what's there. But it 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 allows you to take a very minuscule amount of anything and make it measurable, and then talk about it in meetings and stuff like it is important. See that that that's not a misuse. That's just sort of a misinterpretation. It it is. No, they, that, the, the, there's very little of what they call HIV and what's been brought out here by Phil Pot and and, and Isai already. The measurement for it is not is not exact at all. It's not it's not as good as our measurement for things like apples. An apple is an apple. You know, you can get something that's kind of like if you got enough things that look kind of like an apple and you stick them all together, you might think of it as an apple. But and, and HIV is like that. Those tests are all based on things that are invisible, and they are the results are inferred in a sense. PCR is separate from that. It's just a process that's used to make a whole lot of something out of something. That's what also, it is, but, um, it's, but it's not, it doesn't tell you that you're sick and it doesn't tell you that the thing you ended up with really was going to hurt you or anything like that. That's why it's not, 